will now go into details of this E201 controller we have right here. And it's really packed with a lot of powerful modules. So if you look at what we have, we have eight buttons in a typically program row, eight buttons in a preview row. We have eight buttons over here for cut auto and stuff like that. A very nice T-bar, two audio modules, and a button row up here for, in this case, selecting presets in a robotic camera. We also have a great block of smart switches and smart switches are switches that host a small display so they are able to respond to the settings you make and if you press that button it can actually function as a menu and that's made really well on this model. So if you uh, close in on these things you can see that we just made a simple record button on one of these so when I press this now just come over here and you can see we have a hyperdeck in the rack here and the hyperdeck is now recording because I pressed that button when I press it again it will stop recording on the hyperdeck so that's just one thing this controller is controlling it's also controlling an ATEM switcher and you can see we have uh, the ATEM software control on this laptop here and actually we have an ATEM panel down here. So you can see the correspondence between these units but when I press this button for instance you can see that the ATEM um, control panel here is responding to that as well as the software. When I use the T bar you can see that the software and the panel down here responds as well. And that's of course the one of the features of the ATEM switch is that it allows multiple clients connected to the same ATEM hardware. Very powerful feature indeed. So we have preview row and a program row. And when you press this button, it acts as a menu. And the first time I press, I now see that the lower row is a preview program row. What it means is that any button pressed down here will select the source to preview. And I need to press the cut button in order to make that preview source go to program. So it's actually a very protective mode because it doesn't allow you to uh, bring any source directly to program. But the cool thing is that the upper row now becomes a select row for something else. And currently it's a select row for auxiliary one. How do I know that? Because the smart switch tells me that it's auxiliary one that we are changing by pushing buttons on this row. There's an easy way to see this is happening because we have a 2ME switcher right here and currently it's showing us auxiliary one. So as I press buttons on the upper row you can see that it's actually toggling through these up here. Now if you come over here you can actually see something weird happen because when I pressed button number one, button number two, three, four, five, but then I press button number six and it brings on media player number two. Why is that? I thought it was input number six. That's because we have a brilliant way of mapping the eight buttons to sources on the ATEM switcher. We are using the multi-viewer configuration from the ATEM software and if you look at the multi-viewer we have here, you can see we have camera one through five, but on input number six we have the media player two then we have camera seven and auxiliary one and we are reading out that information from the ATEM switcher mapping it down on the buttons so that on most productions where you have a multi-viewer with eight input sources you can mix and match from all the inputs you have on the ATEM switcher and will be directly reflected on the select rows here. What if you have more than eight input sources? On this model, we integrated a shift key. So when you press the shift key here, you can see that the row up here is changing. When you press the lower shift key, the row here is changing. And what they do is they pick up the configuration from multi-viewer number two, since we have a 2ME switcher. So a really brilliant way of mapping inputs into these buttons. But we were at the menu, so you saw on the menu that we had auxiliary one selected on this row up here. And that could be very useful in a live scenario if you had a, uh, like a big screen in the room and you use auxiliary one to select sources for the big screen. But when I press this button, you see that now I'm selecting media player sources. And how can we see this is happening? Well, we actually have a media player here at the ATEM software. You can see that currently we have still number one in media bank number one. And as I press these buttons, you can see that it's now selecting other sources here. They are not loaded, but it could have been lower third graphics or uh, whatever else that you put in your media bank. Very easy accessible in a live scenario. If we go to the next point in the menu, we have the solo. Solo means that if I want to audio monitor a channel, and let's again look at the software you see over here in the software that currently we have 
channel camera number two on solo, you see it right there. And that corresponds to the selection I made over here. You see channel two is on solo, I now press three, and it's now channel three we have on solo. If I press once more, we get to macro playback. Let's take a look at that. What is macros anyway? It's something Blackmagic added as one of the most recent things to the ATEM switches. So in the software, you can bring up a control panel like this. You can create macros here, add a new macro, give it a name. And what you basically do when you create a new macro is you, you record certain steps that you do in the ATEM switch here. I already made a macro, number, number six, or oh, I think maybe macro number two is, it's, um, we can try to run it here from the software. Okay, so let's let's uh, take a look at what happens when I press two. You know, just um, it's easier to see if you see the switcher panel. When I press macro number two, I timed it so that it's uh, it's flipping through some inputs. Okay, select it and run. Okay, so two, three, four, and it's done. Okay, I just do it again. Two, three, and four. So if we go over to the Skahoy panel, you can see that you have access to executing the macros from this line. And this was macro number two. When I press macro number two here, you see it's executing two, three, four, and then it's done. So we have macro execution right in your Skahoy panel. You can program the macros in the ATEM software, the best of both worlds. This is how we like to do it. So you can go on in the menu, and this one is now ATEM 2ME. It means that we are now controlling the 2ME row. Uh, you can see the mix effect row over here in the software. We have now mix effect two. And uh, as I press the buttons, you can see that it's uh, flipping through the various uh, preview sources here and uh, the program sources here. And of course, we have a T bar, cut and auto button as well. All the modes I've taken you through right now are meant to be accessible through a live show. Now we come to the purple parts of the menu, and the purple parts are really configuration parts. So, for instance, the current mode is that now the upper row is auxiliary 2, the lower row is auxiliary 3, and as I press buttons here, I'm mapping input sources to auxiliary 2 and 3. You can imagine this is something you do before a show, and you don't need to change it through a show. So the really cool thing is that you can hold the button until it becomes red and release it, and now that item is taken out of the menu. I think you'll mean, know what I mean in a moment when you see it. Um, what we got to right now is called auto, uh, audio route, and audio route is how it makes sense of having only two channels of audio uh, adjusted on this panel. Because maybe you notice that we have audio controls, and um, this part of the control is always the master. Now you need to look at the software again, because if you look at the software, you can see that we have a master control over here just take the macros away. We have master control here, and as I adjust the knob on the switch, you can see that I'm adjusting the master volume, okay? So, uh, you also see that I have uh, VU meters for the master volume, so as I uh, reduce or turn up the audio, you can see um, the VU meters reflecting the VU meters over here. Now, you can also see in the interface that we do actually have other input sources with audio. We have camera one and we have camera four, for instance. Uh, we, it could also be that we had some external sources, but the point is I want to assign channel one to control audio coming in from video source number one, and um, that is done. If you look at the audio route button, you can see that the upper row is assigning audio source to channel one, and currently it's assigned RCA that is the input source. So actually when I adjust channel 1, you can see over here in the interface that it's the uh, RCA input audio that I'm adjusting. I want it to be channel 1. How easy can that be? You just, when you're in this mode, you say, I want channel 1 to be mapped to, uh, or input number 1 to be mapped to channel 1. And as I now rotate this button, you see that I'm adjusting audio for this source. I can press this button, which is the on button, and you see that in the software, the on um, flag is changed as I press the button on the panel. You can even assign the VU meters on this panel to those channels. So if I press channel one, the VU meter is now reflecting the audio level coming in on channel one right there. And the same for channel two. 
So that was the audio part accessible through this menu. And when I press to the next one, we come to the tele lamps. So you may not know, but at Skarhoy we have a tele lamp concept. We have two tele lamps here. They can be mounted in a cold shoe on top of a camera, and they can be star configured or daisy chain configured, depending on your uh, liking. One of the cool things about our tele lamps is that you have a uh, preview program tele on the back of the lamp. This lamp is connected to input number one on this device, and if I want to assign which camera input on the ATEM switcher this lamp corresponds to, I'm now going to select lamp number one, and as you can see, it is assigned to input number one. I could select any other input, and it will affect the lamp. Actually, I'm wrong. It's the other, other lamp over here which is assigned to lamp number one. Okay, so lamp number one, the one I'm holding in my hand, is assigned to input number two. And when I go to the green menus again, the operational menus, you can see that currently input number two is on preview. And that corresponds to the green light on the back of the lamp. When I press the cut button, you'll see that this lamp changes. So I see now red on the front and on the back because input number two is uh, now on program. And the configuration of these lamps are really easily done using this smart switch based menu. This is really a powerful demonstration of what you can control on this device. And we are now at a menu point where we are looking at controlling video hubs. So in this configuration, you have one where you on the upper row, you select the input of the video hub and you select which outputs you want to route it to. And uh, since we are in a kind of live environment, I'm not too happy about messing everything up. So uh, I'm just going to explain that currently we, we have selected input number one. That's the ATEM program. And then as I press these buttons, I would map input number one doom, 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 to all the outputs that I wanted. And that's uh, normally not, uh, it's a very useful mode, for instance, if you want to just route a program input to a lot of outputs. Um, but it's kind of the opposite way of usual thinking, but it's very efficient. If you go uh, pressing once more, you now have outputs on the upper row. So when I press any of these, it would be uh, saying, okay, on output number four, or on output number, I'll, I'll take output number one because it's my smart view up here. I now route input number five. So um, you can see it because I know this is output number one. And you can see as I press, I just route different inputs to that particular output, all in the same E201 unit you have right here. And the final thing is that you can assign robotic cameras as well. So let's just take a look at that. Let's imagine that you, because currently I don't have a robotic camera in this setup, but let's say I had a robotic camera assigned to, uh, or coming into input number three. All you need to do is you go to this menu, you say input number three, and then you need to type in an IP address. And that's as basic as say, okay, it's, uh, it's on the, you know, 50 on, on this particular network. So you punch in and you have then 50 right here, and that's all you need to do. When you go out here, you'll see that this row of buttons is currently, in, um, uh, is currently not lighting up. But as I select three as the input, you'll see that I now have available the, the various uh, presets, activating presets in the robotic camera. I can use this joystick as well to operate the camera. I'm just gonna wrap up the menu real quick for you because I showed you previously that I could remove menu items. Now, imagine that you arrive on a set with this unit you want to do some different configuration, but then you want to narrow down your options for the actual live performance. And the idea is that the some 10, 12 options you have in this menu can be removed. So for instance, I want to have program preview, that's fine, I want to have auxiliary one and program preview, but I don't want to, yeah, okay, media player is fine, but I don't need audio solo, so I press and hold, it's removed. I need macros, yes please. I don't need ME2 because that's not connected to anything. And all the audio route, the tele lamps, the video hub configurations, I'm just gonna remove them by pressing and hold and they are removed from this menu. What it means is that now, as I'm cycling through, notice that I'm actually cycling through only uh, four different options for live operation. So that's really neat. I have very quick access to my auxiliary one, macro execution, etc., without all the configuration options because they are just kicked out. I just need to do it once and forget about it. Of course, you can bring back the whole range of options by pressing the reset 
function in the switch. So when you go there, you see reset, I press and hold, and now you can see that I have the whole range of options brought back to me. So just quickly, this section here is really ordinary. It's just cut, auto, fade to black, uh, downstream Kia 1 and 2 and a picture-in-picture -picture feature. But let's just take a look at the picture-in-picture -picture features. So when I press picture-in-picture, -picture, you see up here in the multi-viewer, you see I have a uh, very rudimentary picture-in-picture -picture set up here with the color bars, not very pretty. But the cool thing, and this is where the smart switches are really shining, is that you see how the smart switch gives you a graphical representation of where the picture-in-picture -picture is located. And as I press this button, as I press this button, you can see on the multi-viewer that it's cycled through the various corners of the screen and it's reflected in the smart switch at the same time, which is really nice. The final thing you find is this orange button, which gives you access to the auto rate for the transitions. You can change it here. And a very cool thing to notice is that whole correspondence, because we have here on the um, ATEM uh, broadcast panel, you can see that it's now uh, 111. And as I turn the knob here, you can see the values are changing down here. In fact, you can go the other way. On the ATEM panel, you see that you can set the rate of the transition right here. And if you look over at the Skahoi panel, when I turn this knob, you can see that the rate is actually changing on the Skahoi panel. Typical example of the very nice integration and data exchange between these units. You can do the same for the freight to black rate, but now the final thing that is cool to notice is that you also have control over the scopes. And the scopes are really nice. We like the smart scopes a lot, but they really miss the control of what you see on them and a very flexible way of changing it. So right here, what we have is assigned a button and on the left scope, you can now see that we have picture. It says picture on this. When I turn this knob, you can see that I'm changing what kind of scope I have and the smart switch is reflecting that. So now it's saying we have parade YUV as shown and now we should have a vector 100, vector 75, etc. So there you have it. An E201 integrating control of ATEM switcher Smart Scope, Smart View, Video Hub, Hyperdeck, as well as robotic cameras. All in one unit, Skahoy style.